Good evening, good afternoon if you're on the West Coast, and good morning if you're on the Pacific Rim. My name is Peter Ifu, Professor and Associate Chair of the Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering Department. I sincerely extend my deepest welcome to Rose and the entire MAE family. Today we come together to celebrate distinguished Professor Rafi Hopka's contributions to the Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering Department at the University of Florida. His contributions to MAE go well beyond his publication record, well beyond his mastery of classroom teaching, and well beyond his production of outstanding PhD students. As we'll see in these proceedings, his influence helped establish the demeanor and spirit of our department. His spirit of open-mindedness, kindness, his work ethic, his efficiency, after all, he was always the great optimizer. His patience and his innovativeness persist in his students and fellow faculty members. We have all learned from him. He is undoubtedly the most prolific collaborator in our department's history and has worked with many of our current and former faculty on a wide range of research topics. Today, we will hear testimonials from his former students MAE faculty members and staff. As background, I will briefly review his record of academic accomplishments. Then I'll describe how he impacted my own career, which was immense. Following this, our chairman, Professor Scott Banks, will provide his insights and introduce tributes from Rafi's former students. Professor Bala Balachandar will introduce a slideshow compiled from various sources, including his students, fellow faculty, and staff. Professor Namo Kim, one of Rafi's closest colleagues, will then introduce a few faculty tributes, followed by Professor Bhavani Shankar's tribute. Melanie Di Prospero will then introduce staff tributes. Then we will have a few closing remarks and conclude. So to start the program tonight, I will briefly present an overview of Professor Hofka's path through academia and highlight his vast contributions to our profession. So we'll start with his professional chronology. Rafi was born in 1944 in Tel Aviv, Israel. In 1965, he earned a BS degree from Technion University in Aerospace Engineering. From 1965 to 1968, he was an engineer at the Israeli Aircraft Industries. In 1968, he earned his Master of Science degree from Technion University in Aerospace Engineering. From 1970 through 1971, he was a staff scientist at Structural Research Associates in Laguna, California. In 1971, he earned his PhD at the University of California, San Diego in Applied Mechanics and Engineering Science. From 1971 to 1973, he performed a postdoc at NASA Langley Research Center. From 1973, through 1975, he was a senior lecturer at Technion Israeli Institute of Technology. From 1975 to 1981, uh, he took a faculty position at the Illinois Institute of Technology in Mechanical Engineering as an assistant professor and then was promoted to associate professor. In 1981, he started as a full professor at Virginia Tech in the aerospace in ocean engineering department. And then in 1988, he was, became the Christopher Kraft Chair Professor. We recruited him in 1994 to the University of Florida as a professor. In 1999, he became a University Distinguished Professor. And in 2019, he retired as University 
distinguished professor emeritus. Rafi's contributions are immense and he's published enormous amounts that have added to the literature and propelled our department and his name beyond belief. He has published two books, 12 book chapters. He published and co-authored 339 referee journal papers, 572, 527 conference papers and reports. According to Google Scholar, he's been cited well over 35,000 times and has an H index in Google Scholar of 81. For those who don't know what an H index is, he's published 81 papers that have been cited at least 81 times. Many of his papers have been cited hundreds of times. He was the primary advisor for 53 PhD students in his career and co-advisor for 22 PhD students and nine master's students. He's taught 12 different courses. All these numbers are incredibly impressive, but for Rafi, the most important thing was his collaborations. And he's collaborated with over 180 colleagues from around the world. He's won many honors and awards. In uh, 1988, he was uh, the Christopher Kraft Chair Professor at Virginia Tech. In 1992, he received the Virginia Tech Alumni Award for Excellence in Research. In 1997, he became a fellow of the American Institute of Aeronautics and Astronautics, otherwise known as AIAA. In 1998, he was awarded the AIAA Multidisciplinary Optimization Award. From 1995 to 1999, he was the president of the International Society for Structural and Multidisciplinary Optimization. In 1999, in 1999 he became the UF Distinguished Professor. From 2001 to 2003, he was awarded the coveted UF Research Professorship. So at this time, I would like to tell you a little bit about how Rafi influenced my own career. And this story starts when I graduated high school. I graduated high school in 1981 from Blacksburg High School in Blacksburg, Virginia, where Virginia Tech is located. That was the same year that Rafi was hired at Virginia Tech as a, as a professor. I got a job in uh, the engineering science and mechanics department as a draftsman. That was before they had desktop publishing and everything was done with pen and ink drawings. And about two years into that, I was probably a sophomore uh, in college at the time, working my way through college, paying my way through school. Um, a lady walked into my office and she, was, she said, do you know where the machine shop is? And the machine shop is right next to the drafting room. That lady was Rose Hofka. And I, so I just said, well, the, the machine shop is on the other side of that glass window there. And she goes, thank you very much. And she handed me a piece of candy. Now this was a practice of Rose. Um, and she quite often did that even after coming to the University of Florida. It really struck me as something very beautiful. After I graduated as an undergrad, I then went to grad school and I worked in the area of composite materials and experimental stress analysis. And Rafi was working on composite materials in another department, the aerospace engineering department. So I knew of Rafi and I knew many of his students. Um, I was very good friends with many of his students at the time. So then I graduated with a PhD from Virginia Tech and I went to NASA Langley Research Center for a postdoc. This is the same place that Rafi did his postdoc. I then became a faculty member here at University of Florida. And then a couple of years later was on the search committee that hired Rafi. And so one of my very first interactions with Rafi was at breakfast when uh, Rafi came to interview. And he actually kind of knew me because he knew my parents at the time. 
they, they ran in kind of a similar social circle. And uh, Rafi, his first response was, this is the first time I met you, but I know you. And I had the same response. This was the first time I met Rafi, but I knew him through his students and how they spoke highly of him. So a few years later, at a Christmas party, Rafi came to me and said, what, what do you think about micro -air vehicles? And I just said, well, I don't know anything. What, what's a micro -air vehicle? And he goes, well, it's a little small plane and, and you know, they're becoming fairly popular and, and there's funding in this area. And I said, okay, but I don't know how I can contribute being an experimental stress analysis person. I said, yeah, but I just want to you know, tell you what we're doing. And within two weeks, Rafi and Wei Shi and Dave Jenkins and some other people in our department, Bruce Carroll, they formed a class, a graduate class on micro vehicles in like a two week turnaround. Well, I still kind of watch from the outside, but they also established the international micro vehicle competition that was held, you know, about half a year after that. And so I went to the micro vehicle competition as a reporter for the Streamline magazine, <laughs> which was our department's magazine at the time. I had my camera out there, I was taking pictures and all this kind of stuff. So I watched this competition for a couple of years and none of the airplanes flew very well back then. And there was, they were fairly big too, they weren't all that small. But I, I thought, you know, they just bounce around in the wind and they just tumble around and it, it didn't look very good. And I told Rafi, I've got these ideas about flexible wings and adaptive washout. And using a, a flexible wing to pacify gusts. And I, I told a bunch of people this and not very many people listened to me. But Rafi did, and Rafi went to the National Science Foundation about a month later, two months later after our, that conversation. And he talked to a program manager and said, hey, there's this guy over here at University of Florida, he's got some wacky ideas. And um, I called the program manager after Rafi introduced me to him. And the program manager says, yeah, yeah, because he had so much confidence in Rafi that he gave me a little seed money. And that little seed money completely changed my career path. It was one of these moments where I'll pull a Yogi Berra quote. Yogi Berra once said, when you get to the fork in the road, take it. That was a fork in my road. I didn't realize it at the time, but I took it. And that fork led to a definite bifurcation in my career. It led to dozens of journal papers, uh, a book that I wrote on the subject that was published by AIAA, that's actually translated into Chinese. Many uh, PhD came out of that. Our department landed a couple of Murrays. I had a little part of those. So you could see that that one discussion we had in the hallway that led to something else and Rafi's ability to be open-minded and his selflessness going to the National Science Foundation and having the program manager talk to me. That one interaction, and then the many interactions we had after that, because we, we also worked on grants together on this subject, those interactions completely changed my career. And I will be forever grateful to Rafi his spirit of collaboration and his willingness to go out on the limb for somebody that had some wacky ideas at the time changed my life, completely changed my life. And I'll be forever grateful for that. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hand the proceedings off to Professor Banks, the chairman of our department and he'll take over the proceedings. So Scott, it's, it's all yours. Thanks, Peter. It's really a pleasure for me to join these proceedings, both as a colleague of Rafi's and currently as the interim chair of MAE to represent the entire MAE family. An institution's culture is defined by the things it celebrates. And so it's entirely fitting today that we celebrate the innumerable contributions and impacts that Rafi had on all of us personally and professionally 
and across the wider engineering community. Today, I'd like to share two personal observations on Rafi that to me exemplify aspects of his character that we all have greatly appreciated. First, I think back to 2003 when I was interviewing to join the MAE faculty. I'd been running a hospital-based biomechanics research laboratory for over a dozen years. I had not been in a classroom in that time and I had never before taught a class. So I was looking forward to teaching classes, but I approached it with a bit of trepidation and uncertainty. During my interview, I had a meeting with Rafi and we discussed this point. Rafi shared with me that he sometimes volunteered to teach a new subject that he knew nothing about, simply to give himself the opportunity to learn something new. This was a profound revelation to me, to think that number one, you could be learning a subject along with your students, and two, that teaching could be an exercise in personal growth and intellectual stimulation was eye-opening and really exciting to me. And I remind myself of Rafi's example as I approach every semester in the classroom. He had a profound and early impact on my career as a professor. The other aspect of Rafi's character that I came to know first as a colleague, but even more so since I've served as the interim chair of MAE, was the passion that Rafi and Rose had for providing opportunities for students from other countries to participate in the research enterprise at UF. This was always evident in Rafi and Rose's support and participation in the international student celebrations and other departmental and campus events. And over the past few years, this passion resulted in the Rose and Rafi Hoftka Fund. This fund will exist in perpetuity and annually provide support for students from other countries to spend time in Gainesville working with MAE faculty and students to develop the kind of international collaborations and relationships that Rafi was so proud of in his own career. Through this fund, Rafi and Rose's passion for helping students will continue and serve with everlasting impact on our institution. Having spoken so much to this point about Rafi's passion for education and advancing the interests of students, it's time now to hear from a number of them in their recorded comments. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Amit Kale and I had the good luck of being Rafi student between 2001 and 2005. Uh, I work at Google these days based in San Francisco and today I'm going to share my experience with Rafi in the form of a short poem uh, written mainly from perspective of a student. Uh, the name of the poem is Guru and here it goes. This is a poem for a distinguished professor Rafi Hafka was so much more than my PhD advisor. For his students, Rafi shall always remain a revered guru and sage who gave us so much more than a doctorate. Today, I pen these verses full of reverence and gratitude to narrate his influence of enormous magnitude. After finishing my undergraduation from Rafi, I decided to learn structural and multidisciplinary optimization. Seeing my first manuscript full of red remarks and corrections, I wondered if I was ever going to complete a publication. Writing my first paper seemed more difficult than aircraft certification. I was doubtful of finishing a full dissertation. Honoring his pledge of mentoring obligation, Rafi inspired his students with knowledge and innovation. It was never just about writing a publication but teaching his students to create ingenious solutions. By using the power of experience, networking and collaboration and augmented with algorithms and smart approximations. Every moment with Rafi was like a book of revelation. Notwithstanding a student's imperfection, Rafi made them skilled at swimming and perambulation and empowered them to solve tough problems in life and profession. Whenever I am stuck in a difficult situation, Rafi's salami approach gives an elegant solution. Oh dear Rafi, we miss you, we miss you. 
There is so much build up affinity that I wish you are always there in my vicinity. Life is an elusive mystery. You live forever in my memory as a cherished trinity, the sum total of goodness, wisdom and humility. Your teachings and association cause numerous transformations. You shall always remain my guru and inspiration, who trained us with great care and affection. On this auspicious occasion of Rafi's life celebration, I dedicated to him this modest composition. Thank you. Goodbye. Hi, I'm Ben Smarslock, and I graduated from Rafi's group in 2009. Rafi was such an incredible, thoughtful, and patient advisor. He always went above and beyond taking time to have discussions with his students on the best way for us to present our results, not to mention his detailed handwritten revisions of our journal papers and dissertations. I also had the pleasure of being a TA for Rafi for his uh, aircraft structures course for several semesters, and he carried that same thoughtfulness and innovation into the classroom. He was really ahead of his time regarding uh, web tools for classes, and he had me set up a Google group with a forum uh, so the students could ask each other questions about the homework and so Rafi can make announcements to the class. And he also created this relatively elaborate grade predictor spreadsheet that took into account the students' current performance and projected it forward to their final grade if they maintain the same level of effort, similar to your overall pace in a marathon, not just how fast you ran the last mile. I always thought that was a little different and clever, and uh, the, the students really liked it. Um, Rafi always looked for ways to optimize and improve everything he touched. Uh, one time on our way back from the uh, lunch at the Arredondo room, he said he wanted to improve his reflexes and get a little quicker at tasks on his computer, and he asked if I had any ideas. So I told him uh, about this Flash game in your web browser called Curveball. It's like a 3D Pong game where you move the cursor and the paddle hits the ball back and forth faster and faster the longer you can hit the, the ball uh, bouncing around the screen. And uh, I used it a lot as a way to take a break from work, of course. And uh, he seemed a little interested. And sure enough, a week later, I go down to our regular meeting and I see Rafi playing curveball on his computer uh, before, we, before we had our discussion, research discussion. Um, so that, that was a nice memory uh, about that. I have many other great uh, stories and lessons learned from Rafi, um, and I'm forever grateful to have been uh, mentored by him. My name is Barney Panrama, PhD student of Professor Rafael Hafka and Professor Namo Kim between 2003 and 2008. First, I would like to convey my regards to Rose. Hi, Rose. I hope you remember me. Second, I would like to thank the staff and the faculty members of MAE for putting together this show. It's always a pleasure to talk about Rafi. Rafi was an eternal optimist. Fortunately, this particular quality of him had a reflection on his students, and I'm one of the biggest benefactors of such a quality. There's just too many things to talk about Rafi, be it the way he treats his students, the way he treats his colleagues, his concern for others, or his highest level of ethics. There's just too many things to talk about him, but in the interest of time, I would like to dwell upon one particular quality which would be, why was Rafi such a sought after famous and prolific collaborator across the world? Uh, several years ago, a contact from Sandia told us that they had a software where uh, it can map the collaborators of a particular person and the network of the corresponding collaborators. And when they keyed in Rafi's name into the software, guess what? The software gave up because it couldn't process the sheer volume of data. The reason that I think that Rafi was such a famous collaborator is because he gave simple and elegant solutions to complex problems, making everyone's life easier in the process. The way in which he thought about the solution itself was an optimum optimization formulation. I only hope I can imbibe a few of his qualities. Rafi, I always look up to you. Thanks for being Rafi. You truly are an inspiration. Hello, my name is Taiki Matsumura, Rafi's PhD student who graduated in 2013. I first met Rafi in 2007 when I worked for JAXA. Japanese Aerospace Agency as a rocket engineer. I had a chance to have a sabbatical year 
and I was looking for a place where I can study multidisciplinary design optimization as a way to improve rocket design. That was the beginning for us. Then, in 20... I had a chance to work again with Rafi as his PhD student and research assistant. I learned a lot from Rafi as a professional and as a person. I would say working with him at the University of Florida was the most beautiful time in my life, not only for me, but also for my family my wife Mayumi, my children Misa and Koki. I am very grateful to Rafi for his supervision, respectfulness and open-mindedness. I am very honored to be your student and friend. Thank you, Rafi. Greetings to all. Uh, this is Meli Papila, University of Florida, class 2001. I have thought about how to emphasize Rafi's huge impact on us who gathered here today. It is actually a challenge to do so uh, within a sentence or two. But I think I have found my answer in his words uh, that I recall from our group meetings. He often quoted that we are standing on the giant's shoulders. Uh, when I looked into the uh, original version of this quotation, uh, it's, I think it's by Isaac Newton. It reads as, if I have seen further, it is by standing on the shoulders of the giant. Having said this, I think my short sentence will be, Rafi has been the giant for us. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Hello, Rose and everyone. Hi, Rose and everyone. I'm Diane Villanueva, and I was Rafi's PhD student and graduated in 2013. Currently, I'm a senior systems engineer at MITRE. And I'm Anirban Chauduri. I was also Rafi's PhD student and graduated in 2014. Uh, currently, I'm a research scientist at MIT. So we're both uh, some of his recent graduate students, and we both live in Boston right now. Rafi has meant so much to us both, professionally and personally. After my undergrad at UF, I actually went to ask him for a recommendation for a PhD admission to some other university, and he offered me a position in his group. Accepting that offer is one of the best decisions that I've made in my career and apparently in my personal life. As a mentor, he was a wonderful example of how to conduct yourself with grace and respect in the community. He was always open to all opinions and stressed being able to support your work with technical rigor. I think that's something both of us will carry throughout our careers. I was always amazed at his memory and the amount of information he could recollect and his time management skills and I'm still trying to emulate at least his time management skills and kind of failing. Uh, he was always available for his students uh, even with his extremely busy schedule as one of the most famous professors. Uh, his door was always open. Uh, I really enjoyed our weekly research meetings and uh, my research thought process was heavily influenced, shaped, and refined during these uh, meetings. He always uh, stressed on simplifying the methods that we develop as much as possible and made me realize how difficult it is to come up with simpler solutions to a complex problem uh, and the beauty that lies in such a solution. Personally, he was a dear friend. A uh, PhD is, of course, not easy. <laughs> and he always treated us with kindness and understanding. We saw firsthand how he would deal with different types of students with the same patients. He was always open to provide advice on our paths. Yes, yeah, Rafi was always available whenever I needed him, even after my graduation. Also, Rafi and Rose always made time for us whenever we visited Gainesville, uh, and luckily, we managed to visit several times after our graduation. And finally, some of you might be wondering about us doing this video together, or you guessed it by now. Uh, so we met in 2009, and then eventually we're both uh, Rafi's PhD students, and we got married last year. I think Rose has been introducing me as uh, Diane's husband for the last uh, five to six years now. <laughs> Thanks, Rose. <laughs>
Um, so we were honored to have both Rafi and Rose at our, in attendance at our wedding last year. In fact, Rafi also signed our marriage certificate. Uh, we also realized how well he knows our personalities when he gave the toast during our wedding. Uh, so we're going to leave you with a few pictures of us, Rafi and Rose, from our wedding. Uh, and as you can imagine, they are forever going to be a very big part of our lives. Hi, I'm Anurag Sharma. I was a PhD student under Professor Rafi at the University of Florida. Besides being an outstanding researcher at his field, he was an excellent mentor to all his students. One of his innate qualities was always to listen to other viewpoints by putting himself in their shoes and then expressing his opinions. He was a person with great knowledge and immense intelligence, but yet so humble. One of the unique traits that I have always admired about Rafi was that he never used to spoon fed us with direct solutions to the problem, but instead he used to ask us questions in such a way that by answering those questions, you yourself start figuring out the solution to the problem or at least you know the direction of approach that needs to be taken. This style really helped me to become a better researcher and understand the approach of how to break down the problems by asking right questions and understanding the various aspects to the problem. Till today, I try to apply this approach and it has always helped me to understand the complex problems in a much better way. Dr. Rafi has made an everlasting impact on lives of many students, including mine. He was truly an all-rounder and his knowledge on the worldly affairs was really commendable. I'd like to mention one incident during my PhD days. I was traveling with Dr. Rafi and Rose to Orlando and during our travel, we started discussing about the Indian politics system and I was amazed on the level of the understanding he had about the politics in India even though he was not part of that country and this really shows his attention to details and his in-depth understanding of various issues around the world. Ever since I have graduated, I have, I have the opportunity to meet him several times. No matter how busy he was, he had always found time for me. Although years have passed since I have attended his class or been part of any research discussion, but the warmth and the comforting environment that Dr. Rafi created is still very vivid in my memories and there is no tapering of recollections when it comes to matters for this particular teacher. Dr. Rafi does some of our hearts in a very, very special ways. And I can never ever fully explain him with the merely written words. I am truly lucky and indeed he was always be a timeless icon in my life. Thank you, Dr. Rafi. Hello everyone, I'm Yi Ming Zhang, currently working at the GE Research Center in New York State. I got my PhD with Professor Rafi Hafka in 2018 from the University of Florida MAE department. Still remembered my first paper. It would modify the more than 20 versions. Even I was tired as the leading author. Professor Havka was still very encouraging until we got the final version done. He had been always supportive for me to explore new research topics. And uh, I used to knock his door every now and then. He never turned me down for discussion. Even after my graduation, he had been continually supportive for my research work and keep showing me different perspectives of the academic world. It was my luck to work with Professor Hafka. Hello, my name is Erdem Hajar. I am a professor at the Tob University of Economics and Technology, which is located in Ankara, Turkey. I joined Rafi's group for doing my PhD in 2003. And after finishing my PhD, uh, I have not lost my interaction with him. Basically, I learned how to write a good paper, give a good presentation, write a project proposal, review a paper, and even act as a review editor. In short, I learned 
almost everything about how to become a professor. I am very glad that our roads have been crossed and uh, I owe him so much for his contribution to my life as a supervisor, as a mentor and even as a friend. Thank you, Rafi. I was not a student of Professor Haftaka, but he has treated me like one of his own students since the day I joined the SMO group as a Wesleyan student. I attended his classes and I listened to him supervise students' research on the group meetings. He has had a big influence on my career since then. In the past a few years, whenever I needed suggestions on career or reference letters, he has been so kind and supportive to help me. Professor Haftaka is an excellent teacher with a good sense of humor. He used to tear funny jokes in the middle of a lecture and then he stood there with a big smile on his face and waited for loud laughs from students. At the end, we all laughed together. Because of that, we had so much fun on his class. And during the group, group meetings, he always asked the questions after our presentations. And sometimes his questions were so difficult to answer. But under his influence of questioning, we started to think more, learn more, and do better in research. He is a teacher, an advisor, and a friend. We will always remember him. We will always have his spirits to be with us. His spirits will remind us of what we are and what kind of person we want to be. Thank you, Professor Haptaka. Hello everybody, I am Saman Nili. I have worked with Professor Haftka since 2015, and I was fortunate enough to have him as my academic mentor, co-chair for my PhD committee, and co-author of my journal articles. I received my PhD in Mechanical Engineering at University of Florida in 2019, and right now I am a Research Aerospace Engineer at NASA Glenn Research Center. Rafi was more than an academic advisor to me. He was always a great inspiration for me and I still use his guidance on my day-to-day -day career. He taught me to be persistent, to have a vision, and to develop wisdom. It has been an honor to be Rafi's student and he will stay as my mentor forever. He was a great person who will be deeply missed. Hello everyone, my name is Tushar Boyal and I was roughly a student from 2003 to 2007. Uh, I currently work with Barclays Capital. Rafi's influence on me uh, is quite a lot. To be honest, I would attribute a lot of my success to things that he taught us. And I am not talking just about uh, his, his skills that he teaches us, or he taught us uh, from in the academic side, but a very significant influence he had in teaching the soft skills. Uh, if I remember, uh, look back and uh, remember my time at University of Florida, then one of the things he encouraged everyone in the team was to go out and try different departments uh, where we learn different things. So I went to management school and learned, uh, took a course there and it was quite, quite an exciting course. That was just roughly. He would always encourage students to go out and try different things. Um, there are a couple of other things which I would say is uh, his very defining moment on or teaching uh, on my career. So first I would say is, uh, is collaboration. Uh, I collaborated with so many different researchers from around the world that uh, it was an amazing experience. It just enriched my experience at University of Florida and all of the PhD experience. That's something which I learned that having collaborations as many as possible is actually very, very good for, for, the, uh, for the individual, for the career or whatever way you want to treat it. Uh, the other part which uh, Rafi actually uh, taught us quite very well and I would say it's very, extremely important for us, at least for me, is uh, his, his emphasis on being precise in, in communication, particularly when it comes to written communication, when he's talking about writing a paper. Uh, I remember the first experience when I wrote the paper, uh, first time he gave him a draft and it went back with the, so many red lines and it 
the iterations went quite a few times. It was a very uh, difficult time uh, at that time. But actually what it taught me is, was extremely useful. I learned so many things there that I still use it. It was one of the most important skills I have acquired from him. And uh, with these skills would last forever. I, I know that Ravi is not with us today, but he would definitely be alive uh, in, in my myself forever for the teachings he has provided me. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Hi, everyone. When I received Dr. Kim's uh, email about Rafi's life celebration and his uh, the celebration of his contributions uh, to the research and uh, to the society uh, in general, I was very happy. And so my name is Giselle Fernandez. I come from Argentina. When I came here, I, um, I started my graduate studies at the University of Florida and Dr. Hoffman was my, uh, for my, my main um, um, mentor and he was uh, always present. Uh, I, would, I would send an email and he will uh, respond with like three paragraphs in five minutes and I was, um, it was just like very... Um, very uh, present on my research. He was always like uh, giving amazing ideas, innovative ideas. Uh, he was very patient with me. He always had faith in me. He my guide in this process and I, I, I owe him a lot. I would say that I learned from him um, being patient and uh, checking twice um, before sending a, a result because I, when, uh, when I just started, I was always very anxious to show what I did. Uh, another lesson that I learned is uh, uh, you might be wrong, so that's a, the, the first guess you need, to, you need to assume. And from there, you need to, to prove yourself and the rest that you're right. Um, and, and that was very useful too. Um, I, I had an amazing experience with him. He was like a father to me here. And he, um, uh, as, a, as a mentor, uh, he prepared me to be a successful scientist. And he continued uh, working with me after I graduate. Uh, so right now I'm a, I'm a postdoctoral researcher at Los Alamos National Laboratory. And I'm, um, I, I, I need to decide if I want to stay here or go into Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory. And he was with me during all this process, helping me out to make decisions. I would say that I, I celebrate his life and I, um, uh, that I will miss him uh, very much. Thank you. Hi. Um, hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Um, my name is uh, Bala Balachunder. I'm uh, a professor in the Department of Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering. And uh, it has been a, a real pleasure and a great honor to work with uh, Rafi for the past uh, 15 years uh, since I joined uh, uh, the department uh, as the chair. Um, and uh, it's a, a real uh, uh, wonderful experience for me to share a few thoughts uh, uh, and give my tribute uh, um, yeah, during this uh, celebration of his uh, life. So I want to thank the department for giving me this uh, opportunity. Um, two words uh, come to my mind uh, immediately when I uh, think of uh, Rafi. Uh, um, ever since uh, he uh, left us uh, physically, uh, his uh, face and uh, his smiling face has been uh, uh, it uh, in my memory. Uh, um, uh, and the two words uh, that comes to my mind often are uh, uh, gentle giant. Um, I don't need to explain those two uh, words because you have heard uh, wonderfully from all his uh, students. Uh, he's a giant, uh, he's a giant intellectually, uh, and he's gentle when it comes to his dealings with people. He's humble and he's very gentle. Uh, uh, he, he cares about people. So uh, the, the two words that I want you to also keep in mind is that Rafi is a a gentle giant. He's a man of immense wisdom and sagacity. Uh, 
Now, when I talk about wisdom, I'm not talking about just raw technical talent. Uh, it's not just like uh, he can solve a very complicated equation or uh, do puzzles in uh, milliseconds time. Uh, and, it is a little bit more deep-rooted wisdom. Uh, it blends uh, his uh, technical knowledge uh, with the real common sense. Uh, um, for example, he can explain a very difficult uh, concept uh, um, and uh, something that has great understanding. And he understands the level of the other person who is at the other end. So he has an idea and he has a way of making things very pragmatic. Therefore, he connects with people uh, uh, through his technical excellence and uh, a real common sense uh, uh, approach. Um, let, let me tell you a, a good example uh, uh, where it made a huge difference. Uh, um, I will just want to tell you, share with you a, a wonderful uh, incident. Uh, many of you may know that uh, um, uh, I, Rafi, Namho, and a number of others uh, in the department uh, had uh, a very big uh, Department of Energy uh, a center for over uh, uh, six years at UF. But what you may not know is that uh, that center would not be possible without Rafi. Rafi is the main man why it happened. And I will tell you why. Okay, um, we had uh, the site visit. So we had to write uh, several rounds of uh, proposals. Uh, we got selected and we went up and we went up to site visit uh, uh, and which is the final round of uh, uh, the funding agency uh, trying to decide uh, uh, whether we get it or someone else uh, uh, gets it. So it's very, very uh, crucial. Um, and uh, uh, we had a really tough uh, uh, bunch of uh, uh, referees who were uh, um, critical and were watching uh, every step of what we do. Uh, and uh, there uh, came uh, Rafi's presentation. Uh, and there was one slide. And that one slide changed them, bowled them over. And I could see in the reviewer's uh, face a, a, a light uh, come up. And they said, wow, that's good. And what he did was in that slide, uh, he introduced two wonderful concepts. He uh, uh, talked about uh, what is called empty success and uh, useful failure. Both, them, both of them are oxymorons, uh, but they illustrate a very subtle and important technical point, how one should compare experiments with the simulations. Uh, and it was a revolutionary idea, but yet made in a common sense way. So he described it in such wonderful way. And I saw many of the reviewers eyes pop up. They said that well, this is the pace we want to be investing. And that's why I, I still remember that, that was a very important turning point. And I can tell you why I'm very certain is that uh, we had a renewal uh, uh, site visit uh, maybe about nine months ago, and we did not make it mainly because Rafi wasn't there to bail us this time. So Rafi is an incredible man. He had the clever uh, way of blending technical excellence with common sense and pragmatism. Um, I also want to touch upon two other traits uh, that uh, many of its uh, uh, students have talked about. Uh, uh, one is an incredible bandwidth. He's on top of everything. I have no idea how he managed to do that. Whether it is uh, reviewing a paper for a, a student or reading a thesis or writing a report or uh, getting ready with some PowerPoint presentation, he always did everything before anyone else as if he had nothing else to do. I have no idea how he did it. And this on top of his editorial duties and let don't forget, every day he went to lunch with Rose. Okay, so he did have time for everything and he did it better than anyone else. So this is one thing I will tell you that uh, I have mentioned that, uh, uh, I forgot to mention that uh, there have been at least two other gentle giants in my life uh, who all served as uh, great mentors for me. And all of them were excellent at uh, time management. They did everything very well on time and under budget. The other thing I want to stress upon is that Rafi is a consummate international researcher. Okay, um, Peter talked about how he was able to manage work with 150 people, but many of them from around the world. Uh, not only he interacted with them, he knew everything about every country. Okay, so he has a, a, he has a man of incredible talents. Uh, that's all I can tell. I can 
keep going on for uh, a long time, but uh, in the interest of time, what I want to do is that I want to say that uh, uh, it was a real wonderful uh, uh, 15 years uh, I was able to uh, spend uh, with uh, uh, Rafi as uh, one of the senior uh, faculty in our department. And with that, I want to introduce the slideshow, uh, uh, which uh, have contribution from a number of people who have shared their slides uh, and it was very beautifully compiled by uh, Peter and Peter please run that
Good afternoon, good evening, and possibly good morning. My name is Nam Ho Kim. I'm very happy to see many former students of RAPI, even if it is virtual. I joined the MA department in 2002, and since then, I have a wonderful journey with RAPI for 18 years. We run the same research lab. We had a lunch at Arredondo Cafe every week. We belong to the same professional society. We co-advised nine PhD students. We published 40 journal papers together. And another four papers are still under review. We also published more than 60 conference proceedings. We organized several international conferences together. And the list goes on and on. So it will be hard to define my career in academia without including RAPI. As we all celebrate RAPI's life in the MA department, I would like to mention his sincerity or faithfulness for all relationships he made as a citizen of the department. As an academic advisor of the graduate students, he knows his role and he tries his best to fulfill the role all the time. I know many of you are Rafi's former students. Can any of you remember he got angry during your meetings? I never saw any occasion that Rafi got angry with the students. Well, that doesn't mean that there were no upsetting moments, right? In the most upsetting moment, he normally does this and says, well, let me think. And he actually thinks about how to help students work. He doesn't look at students in terms of how smart they are, but how much they are improved since working with him. He understands the diversity of the student's background and always tries to find a common denominator so the students can work together. He used to buy pizzas to encourage students to organize so-called collaboration meetings. I know many of you hate it, but that's what he did. He himself was always proud of the fact that he published the journal papers by collaborating with more than 180 colleagues, not including his own students. I, I believe that was the, his the most proud, po proud point. Rafi's former students may think that most advisors are similar to him because you have only one sample, right? However, I work with uh, several other professors in advising graduate students, and I can tell you that the way that he treated you guys is more than exception. He saved his budget in every aspect, but very generous to send you guys to the conferences. I also learned from him the role of advisor and how to work with the students. Rafi and I also taught several courses together. In teaching, he defined his role as helping students learning. Initially, I was a very theoretical person with a lot of emphasis on mathematics. Rafi was a practical person and he always starts with an application in mind. You can imagine the distance between the two of us. And yet, he was patient to find a common denominator between us and always came up with an agreeable teaching plan. He often hires additional TAs by his own budget so the students can have more, uh, can have more help. He and TAs organized so-called recitation classes in addition to the regular lectures so the students can practice problem solving. He was the most senior faculty member of the department, but he is not afraid of adopting new teaching technology. For example, during class time, he asked a short question to the student. Students send their answer by messenger, and he finds out how well the class understands the course material in real time. Even if he taught so many courses in so many years, he's the one who starts preparing the fall semester course right after spring semester. In this research emphasized academic environment, I never saw a professor who pays so much attention to teaching. I'm not saying that he doesn't do research. He had a lot of research program, as you already know. But he never depreciated the classroom teaching because he was a faithful in his role as an instructor. Well, I cannot say that he is the best instructor, but I can say 
that he is the sincerest instructor that I have ever seen. I also want to mention Rafi as my mentor. He started with the former department chair, Wei Shi, who asked Rafi to help me. This part is my guess. I was initially in the MAB building as I was hired in the old ME department. When I joined the department, the ME and the aerospace department were merged. So after the merger, Wei asked me to move my office to uh, MAA building, and Rafi asked me if we can go for lunch together. That was the start of 18 year long Tuesday lunch between us. The relationship between mentor and mentee is a delicate one, especially in academia. Some young professor told me that the, uh, some senior professors treat the junior faculty as if they are a postdoc in their lab. It is easy that the relationship can be hierarchical or vertical. There is a gray boundary between helping someone and manipulating someone. However, Rafi's definition of mentoring relationship was sharing his career experience together. When I address some issues or difficulties related to my work or personal life, he came up with a similar experience of his own and shared it with me. Also, the relationship was bi-directional. He often asked my help or my opinion on his own issues, and he always respect my opinion. I remember when he was, he became 70 years old, he asked me if I have any advice as he becomes 70. I told him in Asia, the age of 70 is considered as a rare age, that the term is literally a rare age. And my advice was not to try to do new things, but try to maintain what he's doing now and continue to do it. He thanked the, the advice and he said he had the same thought. Our lunch was stopped due to the COVID-19 in March. And I didn't realize that it was the, our last lunch. When I talked with him on the phone on the last day, I didn't tell him how much I appreciate him because both of us didn't know it was our last conversation. But at this opportunity, I would like to say how much I appreciate him and how much I miss him. His philosophy is in the phrases that he often used and you, some of you already mentioned today. He used to say, we all are in the shoulder of a giant. And also he said, take a salami approach for everything that you do and put yourself in other shoes. I hope you all remember this phrase whenever you uh, remember him. With that, I would like to introduce anecdotes from other faculty members, Professor Stephen Miller and Professor Shin Tang, uh, junior faculty of the department which shows how Rafi helped the junior faculty to succeed in the career. Dr. Ting Dong and Dr. Teresa Benitez are lecturers in the department. In particular, Ting Dong was a TA for Rafi for many classes. From that experience, she decided to stay in academia for a career. Dr. Nesto Capo was a visiting professor from Venezuela and a good friend of both Rafi and myself. Lastly, Professor BJ Fregley is a close collaborator with Rafi. So we will watch the video now. Thank you. Hello, my name is Steve Miller, and I joined the University of Florida Department of Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering in August of 2016. I first met distinguished MAE professor Rafi Hafka at breakfast during my interview for my professorship. Little did I know that when I met Dr. Hafka that I met someone who's truly the heart of the MAE department. I immediately learned that Rafi and myself share a deep love of Baroque music and a mutual interest in the composer Antonio Vivaldi. Through this initial connection, we became friends and colleagues within the Department of Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering. This interaction, like many others with new professors in the department, helped me not only become and feel personally welcome to the university community, but also helped me excel as a new professor. Dr. Rafi Hafka had a patient and understanding presence. He always listened carefully and considered his response 
carefully before replying. During seminars, his questions were always some of the most insightful. During my own seminar, MAE, I recall he asked a mathematical modeling question that caused me to pause and carefully question my approach. We always were wise to listen and rose together through his wisdom. Professor Hafka, within the Structural and Multidisciplinary Optimization Group, performed internationally recognized research and collaborated with many other faculty. He might have collaborated with more faculty members through his research than any other in our department's history. Dr. Hafka and his wife have been so kind to invite me to their weekly dinners and outings, where I learn much about their lives. It was a common occurrence to meet people from across the university in different fields like medicine, biology, art, art history, and countless others. Dr. Hafka considered all ideas from a wide spectrum of people. I am so thankful for these interactions over the past years. He had a tremendous impact on students. Previous and present undergraduate and graduate students have communicated this impact to me over these past years. They've consistently told me about his qualities of ever-present kindness, patience, impeccable manners, and carefully thought out impactful ideas, both personal and technical. I hope I have learned and gained some of these qualities through my career and in personal relationships with others from Dr. Hafka. Perhaps this is the greatest lesson of all which he has taught us. Professor Hafka was the heart of the MIE department. He had a profound impact on international and domestic students alike and had an everlasting technical impact through his research. In these ways, he has touched all our lives. Thank you, Dr. Halka. For the past two and a half years, while I was at the UF, I have been regarding Rafi as one of my senior mentors. Despite the short time that Rafi and I stayed in the same campus, his integrity and his scholarship significantly inspired me. I remember that the first time Rafi and I had breakfast together is on the second day of my faculty interview at 2016. He frankly shared with me his past experience, both in Israel and Virginia, and his perspective on the academic career. From that moment on, I realized he is a respectful and intelligent scholar. Since I come to the campus, I'm very fortunate to have a choice to lunch with Rafi multiple times. I still remember one time I even joined the lunch with Rafi while he and Nan Hao were talking about their joint research papers. When I talk with Rafi, he always listened carefully and gently. After I complete, he gave me his insightful and uh, sharp thoughts in an honest manner and from his perspective. Rafi is a mind-opening mentor and he always kindly suggested me that I should also talk to several other mentors to collect the different opinions before making a decision. I have been following his advice and tips and find that they are truly helpful. The last time I had lunch with Rafi is when he was organizing a service center to help international students. Rafi asked me what are the biggest challenges that I encountered when I was a international student and what experience I had. He thinks that some of my experience may be helpful to other younger international students. He is absolutely right, and I understand how meaningful what Rafi's efforts are for international students. Rafi, I very much appreciate your kind mentorship and time. I will definitely keep them in my heart and implement, implement them. I will also pass your advices to the younger generations and the colleagues. I believe that that's what you wish to see. Thank you very much, Rafi. Hi, I'm Ting Dong. I was TA for Dot Hafka for the first two years of my PhD, and he was also my research committee member. I remember the first semester when I came to this department, I was really not confident about myself because my background was material science. But somehow he really had faith in me and encouraged me a lot uh, for teaching the abacus tutorial classes and the recitation, weekly recitation classes. And that, uh, that, that was the start of my teaching experience and I learned a lot from him. 
And during those two years when I was TA, I found that he was also sincerely care about of his students. He always asked feedback and suggestions and looking for places that he can make improvement for the class. In our lab group meeting, he can always give very insightful guidance for our research. And the special thing I found about him was that um, he emphasized a lot on the research presentation. He said, all presentations should be understandable by the audience. And that's what encouraged me to go to the 3MT competition at UF and statewide competition. Um, overall, in the past several years, I feel that not only he taught me how to teach a class, how to do research, uh, more importantly, how to be a better person, be nice to people around us and care about our students, and always be passionate and responsible for the thing we do. I am Teresa Benitez, and I'm a lecturer in mechanical and aerospace engineering. And a lot of people have shared, you know, their experiences with this amazing professor in terms of projects that they did or the research that they conducted together with him or collaborations, professional collaborations. So I did not participate in any activity of the sort with him. And we never really, you know, shared like a class or lecture or anything like that. So my experience with him was mostly personal. And that's just one side of people that matter so much. And for me as a, as a woman and a Hispanic woman, I was going to mix that into, I don't know, like a new word, Hispanic woman, that sometimes I'm, I'm a little scared to go into a room where everyone else is, is different to me. He always made me feel very welcome. When I spoke, he would never interrupt me. He would always let me finish. And again, we never really collaborated on, any, on anything, so he didn't have to listen to me. And then he would just give me that gentle smile of his and say something in good humor. And it was so lighthearted, but respectful at the same time. And the last few times that I saw him were during Tuesday morning coffees, Tuesday morning coffee sessions we had before COVID-19. And I sat next to him a bunch of times. And it was always just one of the best parts of the day because he was so wise, but so again, gentle in his communication with me and, and funny and always acknowledging whatever I said. And I will miss that, just a true gentleman. We, we will miss that, we will miss you. The first episode of a series called Life Lessons from Rafi, I would have called it open-mindedness. When we describe open-mindedness as a combination of both intellectual humility and being open to experience, we all probably feel we are open-minded. Are we really? This is why Rafi was in a league of its own. I met Rafi in the fall of 2003. Venezuela had recently experienced an oil strike and for all practical purposes had come to a halt. Then I decided to take a sabbatical. While exploring options, I brought away she, then department chair. To make a long story short, he expressed interest, but said that a faculty would need to be willing to collaborate and be the host. Of course, the use of suspect for international collaboration rapidly answered the call. The response from Wei Xi came fast. I felt special. Little did I know then that Rafi had done similar collaborations with more than 30 other colleagues from 14 different countries. The sabbatical was a magical year. The picture I'm showing was taken during the last of a seminar series I conducted on ensemble learning and related topics. There you can see Rafi sitting on the left and also younger versions of Wei Xi, Nam Ho Kin, and BJ Fregley, and of course, many other students. One of the manuscripts we wrote during that year now has more than 2,000 citations. From there on, we co-authored a string of successful NSF proposals that kept our collaboration going for more than a decade. But more importantly, we forged a friendship of a lifetime. I feel privileged to have met Rafi. He made a phenomenal impact in my life then and still does. For that, I'm forever grateful. Rest in peace, Rafi. Rafi was one of the first people I met in the department. He was on the faculty search committee that hired me 
and I vividly remember having lunch with him during my on-campus interview in 1998. After I started in the department in 1999, Rafi was the first professor I started working with. For the next 10 or so years, Rafi and I worked closely together on a wide range of biomechanical optimization problems, publishing numerous papers together. I greatly enjoyed our meetings in his office, brainstorming different research questions that we could pursue together. My knowledge of optimization in general, and surrogate modeling in particular, expanded immensely thanks to my interactions with Rafi. Early on, Rafi was also very helpful in mentoring me on grant proposal writing. He provided some very specific feedback on my early proposals, feedback that eventually resulted in successful NSF and NIH new investigator awards. As I mentor postdocs and junior faculty members in my current department, I often share proposal writing words of wisdom that I originally learned from Rafi. One of the things that I greatly respected about Rafi was that as he went on in his academic career, he remained extremely curious and highly active in research. It was evident that he loved what he did, and his desire to continue to make new discoveries did not seem to wane as he got older. I hope that I can do the same as I continue on in my academic career. Overall, of everyone who was in the old Ames department when I started in 1999, Rothley undoubtedly had the biggest positive impact on my career trajectory, for which I'm extremely grateful. Good evening. Uh, my name is uh, Bhavani Shankar, and I'm a professor in the MA department. I was already at UF for eight years when Rafi joined our department. Until then, my way of doing research was such that I was working and publishing with my graduate students, like a lone wolf. When Rafi joined our department, first thing he did was to identify people he can work with. My research area, which is composite materials and structures, is a rich field for optimization. And he so introduced me to this idea of collaborative research. We got a joint project funded by NASA and started co-advising students. Then I realized that collaboration is very efficient, synergistic, and above all, it is fun. He introduced me to the areas of structural optimization, non-deterministic design, and other probabilistic methods. Students were able to learn from each other in the group and they were also learning from two advisors now. Rafi was generous with his time, resources in the project and ideas uh, with me. Since then our collaboration continued until he passed away in August. When I called him in the hospital, he said he was there for pneumonia and even gave me the false schedule for our meetings. He was very optimistic and enthusiastic about the research for his last breath. When it comes to teaching, we shared three courses over the years, and we used to consult each other on the syllabus, project, and exams. I found his problems were very challenging and insightful, as others uh, expressed. His practical knowledge of aerospace engineering, particularly aircraft structures, was amazing. Because he had worked in the aircraft industry in Israel and also continued to work with engineers from NASA and other aerospace companies over the years, he had gained tremendous practical experience on aircraft design. That experience reflected in his teaching and also in research. One of his projects for the course we teach, aircraft structures course we teach was Boeing 767 wing, which he simplified as the students to redesign. I'm still using that project in my course. And he was very generous in sharing project, exam, and other things to the benefit of students. Besides academics, Rafi and I used to discuss societal and political issues. Rafi was up to date with international affairs. As uh, Anurag pointed out, once after the research meeting, we were discussing Indian politics, and he asked about some of the newest states that were carved out of some big states in India and to my embarrassment, I didn't know anything because I was not following at all. Rafi knew the number of new states that has been formed and their names. When asked, Rafi said he and his brother in Israel talked to each other almost daily using Skype and would quiz each other on international matters and he learned a lot from his brother also. 
his opinion and ideas on some of the issues were quite different and quite interesting. I don't want to quote him because it would be unfair. He's not here to correct me if I misspoke. A month before his passing, I, uh, we used to meet every week on Tuesday for a search meeting by Zoom. I emailed Rafi said, I want to talk to him about general stuff. I miss talking. He agreed and we one evening I called him. We decided to speak for half an hour, but the meeting, our talk went on beyond an hour. Then we had to close the meeting because it was too long for him. We talked about COVID-19, how it is compared to American response to European response, upcoming election, everything. Rafi is a quiet person, but given sufficient time, he would talk about personal stuff. He was interested in classical music as others watch. And also he liked Indian food. Uh, we have invited him, Mira and I have invited Rose and Rafi several times to our home. Once we invited him for a house concert at our home. After the concert, I asked him if he enjoyed sitting there for three hours and listening to Indian classical music. Rafi gave a surprising response. He said, yeah, it sounded like a Palestinian music, which he has uh, used to such a music. He was very kind to my wife and daughter and always inquired about her well-being and how my daughter was doing in school. I want to conclude with a very small, a funny incident that happened 10 years ago. Once we took a, a bottle of wine for a holiday party at their home. A couple of days later, Rafi called, you know, I were in different buildings. Hey, I have a check for your daughter. I was confused. So I went to his office. He had a check to return to my daughter's name but it was not from him, it was one of our friends. What happened was we reused an old wine bag we had in our closet. It was given to us by somebody six months earlier. We did not notice an envelope, white envelope with a check at the bottom of the, the bag. My daughter also didn't notice. We consumed the wine though. I, was, I felt very embarrassed, but Rafi said, it's quite normal, what is wrong with it? And made me feel at ease. I was really glad he he didn't take it as a as offensive. Rafi, we will we will miss you very much. Thank you. Now I ask uh, Melanie D. Prospero to introduce the staff who would like to offer the tributes to Rafi. Thank you. Um, good Greetings, my name is Melanie D. Prospero and I'm the administrative specialist in our department. I would like to take a quick moment and share one of my favorite times with Dr. Hofka. This is a glimpse into his competitive side. Roughly two years ago, a group of our faculty and staff teamed up in a university-wide walking challenge. Dr. Hofka was a strong contender with logging over 12,000 steps a day for 40 straight dates. With his determination and participation, we were able to secure first place in our division. We could not have done it without him. As you heard during this evening, Dr. Hofka has made an impact on the lives of students and faculty. Well, he did not stop there. Throughout his years in MAE, he has provided his wisdom, stories, and most of all, his support to our departmental staff. It has been a true pleasure, pleasure to witness his kind interactions when he would stop by to visit with us. I am now happy to share the following videos from a few of our staff. Thank you. Hi everyone. So I was asked to uh, say things about Dr. Hofka and let's say he was amazing. I always delighted in seeing him in the hallways and around. He was always so cheerful and willing to just chat and talk and always had so much information to give. And I can just see how well he would make as a faculty. I only knew him from staff, um, but I worked there for quite a while with him and all across the hallway as always. And I remember he gave an, a video thing on like, his work for all the staff members. And I still think about how it's safer to fly in a bigger plane than a small, tiny one. <laughs> Cause you know, the, you know, the amount of people it's always safer. So they do more research, which he seemed to also enjoy. I thought his conference was great. 
but he always had a cheerful disposition and always walking. He, I'm really, I feel like I'm very grateful and willing that I got to meet him in this lifetime. And I feel like people affect people and he affected mine in such a positive way, always being a delight at work, no matter what. And always willing to go for a walk, which was always nice. Sometimes you just need to get out of the office. And yeah, I, he will be greatly missed, but hopefully, you know, wherever we end up being, he's in a better, funner place with more adventures. All right, bye. Hello everyone, my name is Jennifer Brown. I have been with mechanical and in aerospace engineering since 2007. Um, I'll speak a little bit about um, Dr. Hofka. Dr. Hofka was a very sweet man, a very kind heart. Loved having conversations with him at all times. He was one of the first faculty members that I actually met during my time here at MAE. He was very instrumental in giving feedback and assistance with the development of our My MAE system. Um, one of my personal fond memories of doc Dr. Hofka was when I was pregnant with my youngest daughter. He was constantly checking on me, making sure I ate, making sure I wasn't stressed out to make sure that I had a very good pregnancy. He'll be very missed, and he was just a great asset to our department. Thank you. Hi, I'm Terry Dildine, and I'm part of the research team in the Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering. Dr. Hofka was always trying to ensure everyone felt a part of MAE. I remember one of the first faces I saw every morning was Dr. Hofka smiling. He made sure to say good morning and asked me about me and my life during this time. Um, Dr. Hofkin and his wife Rose used to take the staff when we were a smaller group um, to lunch during the month of December to celebrate the upcoming holiday and just to thank us for a great year. We would go to the Arredondo room with him and Rose and talk about ourselves and our holiday plans and he would share pieces of his life with us which was really appreciated. That was the kind of man that he was. He was kind, generous, and always had time to stop and chat about whatever, just to let you know he appreciated you. His generosity and his spirit will be missed in the department. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Raquel Muir. I'm the accountant for the Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering Department. And my journey with Dr. Hafta started in 2011 um, when I started at MAE and he was just a key fixture transitional faculty with the staff and with the faculty within the department. And he was very compassionate, always checked in, stopped by. Um, he was one of the key people in our seminar series with the department, our breakfast seminar series. And it was just a good way to bridge the gap between the faculty and the staff. And him being pure of heart was always a person you could come to, you could talk to, and he surely will be missed. Thank you. So as my colleagues before me had indicated, there are numerous moments that we can all recollect. Dr. Hoffa to me was a fountain of knowledge. I found myself knocking on his door on several occasions to get his views on a number of perspectives. I respected his views because of the length of his service, and insight into MAE, and he was always right on the dot. He also encouraged us to seek counsel with other faculty, or students for that matter, because I believe it, and it speaks to the culture of inclusivity that he believed in. I have two personal fond memories about him. His avid interest in politics that led to several meetings in the hallway, where we traded our views on the political saga in Malaysia, which gave me a keen appreciation of his wit. One other fond memory was that led to the renewal of his vows with Rose. Um, he needed a marriage license in English, which uh, was required for his retirement paperwork. An off-the-cuff suggestion from me led to what I believe uh, both of them tying their knot and renewing their vows. That was a fond memory. In closing, there are many qualities that Dr. Hafka has that we could all embrace. He was an individual who believed in making a difference and actively invested and created opportunities to benefit all those around him. He believed in being the change and to see that change in action. Dr. Hafka's contributions have been valued by many and he will continue to live in our memories. 
Thank you, Dr. Hafka. You will be missed by all of us. All right. Hi, Rose, family and friends. I remember the first time I met you and Rafi. It was um, it was many holiday parties. I remember that. And Rafi was um, very passionate about his students, and he really helped me make those connections as alumni and friends. And um, I really met with a lot of his students, and they talked in, about him and how much they appreciated and respected him and enjoyed him as a professor. So he truly cared about each one of his, of his students. Hi, Rose. I just want to say it's such an honor to know you and Rafi uh, in this world that we're in uh, in development. We often come across great individuals and uh, he was definitely one of them. We want to just thank you for all you've done and will continue to do for the department. And we appreciate you all so much. And I look forward to connecting with you and, and maybe family sometime soon. Thank you for all you do and all the best to you and everyone around you. And so, uh, Rose, Mike, and I wanted to present to you this shadow box and show you there. Um, so it's Rafi at his computer desk with his um, door name plate. It's a beautiful um, shadow box that we cannot wait to give to you personally. Um, we will truly miss Rafi very, very much, but his legacy does live on through the department and through his students. So. We'll see you soon. So uh, earlier tonight, um, Mary delivered the shadow box to Rose in the MAE building. And so um, I'm happy to say that Rose has been watching the proceedings uh, accompanied by Steve Miller. Um, Steve was a very, important part of this production. Um, and I wanna thank him personally, and I wanna thank Rose personally also. But as you can see, as you can see, Rafi was loved and admired by so many people. Before we close tonight, I would like to thank all those that made these proceedings possible. So I would like to go through some acknowledgements here. I want to thank all the, I want to thank all Professor Hofka students who provided videos. And my dogs want to thank you too. They're out there barking. <laughs> Thanks to all the former and current faculty and staff who provided these videos. Uh, special thanks to Carolyn Howard uh, for her technical expertise and advice. We could not have done any of this without Carolyn. Um, thanks to Sierra McVeigh, Zachary Savitsky, and Ramai Gosby for the technical help in this production. I want to thank Melanie DiProspero for her tribute and all of the technical support she gave. Also, um, this production was kind of dreamed up by myself and Dr. Banks and Bala and Dr. Kim and uh, Dr. Shankar. So I wanna thank them for the extraordinary effort that they made in this process. Special thanks to Professor Steve Miller for being such a special friend to Rose. We really appreciate that. And special thanks to Matlock Menu, who is my graduate student, my PhD student, who did all the video editing. He did a really good job and he stayed up late many nights. So in closing, I would like to extend our department's sincere appreciation for all that Rafi has done for us. I wanna thank, I wanna thank you Rafi and I wanna thank Rose and at this point, good night, everybody. It was a real pleasure.